Welcome to the Movie Zone. Today we are recapping the 2012 war action movie Into the White, based on a true story. This movie tells the tale of German and British soldiers who were forced to stay together to survive amidst the Second World War. As usual, spoilers ahead, so be ready. Let's begin. In the winter of 1940, the British Empire and Nazi Germany were in a struggle to capture Norway. Both of the world's superpowers wanted Norway for its rich iron mines, and so it was a race to see who could capture the Norwegian lands first. On April 27, 1940, a German fighter plane is shot down while fighting with other British planes. They manage to shoot down an English plane as well, but one of their gunmen is killed in the process, and their plane also crashes into the snowy wastelands of Norway. The plane lands safe and sound nearby, and the crew, consisting of Lieutenant Horst and Private Strunk and Joseph, get off the plane. One of their men, Hef, is killed in the action, and Joseph is also shot in the arm. The Germans quickly get their essentials off the plane, food and medical equipment, as Strunk works on Joseph's wounds. Horst goes around to scout the area. Once Joseph's wound is tended to, the crew then burns down the plane along with Hef. After creating a small sled for them to drag their food around, they don't have any personal belongings except Joseph, who carries along with him a signed book from Hitler on Nazi philosophy. The three German soldiers travel through the harsh climate of Norway, but with plenty of food and warm clothes with them, they are able to spend the first night with ease. On the second day, however, a massive blizzard arrives in the area, and since they are still traveling, hoping to find a ship harbor nearby, the German crew gets caught in the blizzard. The snow slips from under their feet, and Strunk slips into a pit. Since the sled carrying the food is too heavy, he is forced to leave it behind in order to escape without any harm. The Germans are now in big trouble, but they keep moving forward relentlessly. After traveling for quite a while through the raging blizzard, they stumble upon a hunting cabin. It is perfect. They find it warm and safe, and there is a heater there as well, although there are only two matches for them to use. The heater seems to be working well. They could spend the rest of the harsh weather there and head out later. Just as the Germans rejoice in their discovery, they hear some sounds coming from nearby. Horst immediately recognizes them as Englishmen, and from the mist around them, two British military men arrive. They introduce themselves as Captain Davenport and Gunman Smith of the British Army. They were the men from the plane that Horst and his men had shot down. At first, the two crews exchange greetings, and the Germans even share the place with the British. But soon the whole thing gets sour when Davenport and Smith refuse to sleep on the beds assigned to them by Horst. Davenport tells them that this area belonged to the Norwegians and not Germans, so they had no right to command him and Smith. The German lieutenant immediately takes the two prisoners of war and holds them hostage. They plan to set for the harbor the next morning and take the two into German war camps for the rest of the war. Horst orders Strunk to carefully check for any weapons on the two Englishmen, and they find that Captain Davenport was carrying a lighter, just what they need. Horst confiscates the lighter, but promises to give it back as Davenport tells him it was a gift from his late father. Horst then uses a burning wood to mark out areas for the two crews to live in. One half belonged to the English, while the other belonged to the Germans. Horst even agrees to treat the Englishmen fairly and in accordance with the Geneva Treaty's rules. He promises to give them the same shelter and food as themselves. And for sports, they are welcome to enjoy the harsh weather of Norway. First order of business. The lieutenant makes Smith and Davenport tear up pieces of newspaper for toilet paper. Smith doesn't seem to like the Germans, and Joseph doesn't trust the English either. Joseph's condition, however, is getting worse as time goes by. And since they only have regular medical supplies, there is not much they can do to a gun wound. Davenport notices this and tries to help, but the Germans won't let him come even a step beyond the English part of the cabin. Smith has a careful eye upon each of them. The lieutenant was a hard man with great principles. Joseph was a hothead and a Hitler fanatic, and Strzok rarely spoke a word. He keeps scribbling on his book, but they don't know what. When the first set of firewood dies out, Strunk and Smith go out and tear open the top of the restroom for firewood. Smith finds Strunk strange and aloof. Unlike his own bubbling personality, the giant of a man is quiet and focused. That night, after having what no one could actually call dinner, the whole group decides to talk to pass the time. There is no way they could talk about politics as their ideals are miles different. So they talk about the one thing that men could almost always agree on, women. Smith relates the tale of his love, 
He was supposed to have been on a date with Sheila. For him, she was the most beautiful girl ever. The group asked him how the two had met, and Smith tells them how she had one day arrived at the pub where he was a dart champion for three years, and straight up defeated him three times in a row. When he had left for the war, she had asked him to join her. Smith shows the group the note that Sheila had given him. As the group hears his tale in awe, Horst then tells the story of Strunk, who had left his large company back in Germany to volunteer in the war, while Joseph, who is an orphan, had joined the war for his beliefs. When the time comes for his story, however, the lieutenant shuts down the talk and orders the Englishman to wash the dishes. That night, Joseph's condition worsens under the harsh weather. Davenport suggests they use the alcohol in their compass to disinfect the wound. Despite them needing the compass the next day to travel, Horse decides to heed Davenport's advice and uses the alcohol on Joseph's elbow wound. When all of them finally decide to go to sleep, the Englishmen and Germans are still not so trusting of each other, and the Germans sleep with their guns beside their beds. Morning arrives, but the weather has shown no signs of improving. There is yet another blizzard in the area. Davenport and Smith are against the idea of heading out, but Horst is adamant that they move now. Joseph's condition is worsening by the minute, and on top of that, they were out of food and firewood. With no other choice left, the whole group heads out once again in search of the nearby harbor. However, as soon as they head out, the blizzard gets so intense that the group gets separated into two. They follow each other's voices to reunite and once again return back to the same hunting cabin. They now have only one way to survive. They would eat the moss that grows under the rocks and would have to start tearing down the house itself for wood. That night, as the whole group tries to get along, Smith shows off his dart skills. He even manages to get a laugh out of everybody except Joseph, who still can't bring himself to like the Englishman. Smith feels likewise about Joseph, and when none is looking, he takes the book from Joseph and uses it as toilet paper. When he goes out, he notices some reindeer as well, but they all run away before he could call in the others for help. When Joseph finds his book torn and used as toilet paper, he cannot withstand it and almost shoots Smith, but Horst forces him to remain calm and follow orders. During the chaos, Smith manages to swipe the weapon from Joseph and takes him captive, and the whole hostage situation turns on its head. Now, the Germans are captives of the Englishmen. Considering Joseph's condition, however, Davenport does allow the Germans to have better beds. That night, as the Germans tend to Joseph's wound, Smith notices Strunk's book on which he was almost always scribbling. The man was an artist and had been drawing cartoons of their days spent together. Over the next few days, their food supplies start to deplete harshly, and they have nothing but the walls, floors, and the roof left to tear down. Smith is still adamant that he had seen reindeer earlier, and so Davenport orders him and Strunk to go out to hunt. After the two leave, he orders Horst to axe down the middle column of the cabin. As soon as Horst does as he is commanded, the roof starts to fall and the two men quickly go to hold the roof up until their friends arrive. Outside, Strunk and Smith get along quite well. Even though their personalities are very different, they manage to make a bond after spending so many days together. As they converse about life after and before the war, Smith notices a white hair and shoots it down with precision. Taking advantage of the situation, Horst once again takes possession of the gun from Davenport. Smith and Strunk arrive just in time to help the two. They bring the beam back in place, but once again, as soon as the trouble is dealt with, the two camps point guns at each other. Horst realizes that this will get them nowhere, and so he proposes a ceasefire. Smith reluctantly agrees and the two camps dispose of their guns outside. The line for each territory is erased, and the whole group enjoys a proper meal together after such a long time. Just as they finish dinner, a foul smell covers the whole room. Joseph's wound has gotten really bad and has started to rot. There is only one way to save him from death by infection, and that was to amputate the arm itself. Horst orders Strunk to tear the floor to warm some water so they can sterilize the axe before performing the amputation. But just as tears open the floor, Strunk finds a box full of food, hiding dried meat, and tons of alcohol. The supplies were probably hidden there so that the Germans wouldn't find them. They immediately feed the alcohol to Joseph until he passes out, and Horst performs the amputation. Elsewhere, in a military base, nearby, a spy informs the general about a burned-up German plane he had seen nearby. 
The general sent some men to capture the Germans. That night, the Germans and the Englishmen enjoy a stellar evening together with good food and great wine. They plan on heading out the next day together, and then part ways once they reach the port. The next day, Smith and Strunk head out to scout a short way to get to the harbor nearby. While returning, however, the Norwegian soldier who had been sent to capture the Germans shoot down Strunk. They immediately take the whole crew captive and the Englishmen are brought before the Norwegian general for questioning. While the Germans are to be sent to the POW camp in Canada, before they are sent away, Horst comes by one last time to give back Davenport's lighter and with no more words, he simply leaves. Davenport sees them leave one last time on the boat to the POW camp. Horst spent seven years in the POW camp, while Joseph, who managed to survive, was also part of the camp for as long as the war was raging. Davenport and Smith returned back to the army, but their plane was shot down again, and this time, Smith was killed in action. Davenport spent the rest of the war as a prisoner in the German camp. Several years later in 1970, Horst received a call from Davenport who was called to his hometown in London, and the two men met once again, but this time as friends rather than enemies. What do you think about this gripping movie? Tell us in the comments below. Be sure to like and subscribe. See you next time.